This meeting is being recorded. So good afternoon and good morning everyone. Welcome to West Connect. My name is Sagar Kapoor and I'm part of Tableau Customer Success Team. So what is West Connect? So West Connect is all about connecting people with art of data visualization and storytelling. And it's a platform for everyone to come and present and share their learnings. So West Connect started last year in May 2018. And it was just an experiment to go ahead and see if you can really engage with the community just to share best practices. So, so far we have done 25, 20 sessions, 25 speakers have presented 4,000 and plus attendees we have reached out to. We have more than 300 subscribers on YouTube channel now and 500 plus members on the LinkedIn group. And this has been possible thanks to all our amazing speakers. I will definitely recommend you guys go ahead and check our sessions library. Some of the great content over there. Subscribe to it so that you are posted about the sessions which we are having. Join the community. I think resources waiting for you guys. Go ahead, contribute to it, learn from each other, and it's all about connecting to like minded people. So today we have someone special. Her name is Maria. So Maria is the C. George Mason University studying economics and data analytics. In August 2019, she had the honor of being chosen to be the Tableau student ambassador. She has hosted and taught Tableau workshops to students on campus and provide tutoring and supporting and learning the tool. She recently published the Tableau studentguide.com. I will send you the link for it, which helps students to learn Tableau connect with the community. And the topic which she has for this connect is about designing and creating interactive resume with Tableau. And the fun fact about her is that she once met President Obama and the First Lady Michelle Obama and sang for the entire cast of Hamilton at the White House. Maria, over to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Sagar, for having me on this webinar. I am very excited to be presenting today. So as he said, my topic is on designing interactive resumes in Tableau. I will be walking you through the three main steps that go into creating a Tableau resume and showing- Sorry, sorry, sorry Maya, I think you have to share your screen. Oh, yes, I do. All right, let me go ahead and do that. All right, so let me pull up my PowerPoint. There you go. All right, so I will be, um, going through the three main steps uh, in creating a Tableau resume and then showing a lot of examples from the community. So as Sagar has mentioned, my name is Maria Brock. I am a Tableau Student Ambassador, which is a new ambassador branch that was created just this year. As a student ambassador, I am in charge of bringing a Tableau presence to my campus. So I host and teach workshops to students and help them start out with licenses and work with campus recruiters to help students learn more about their data. This past semester, I taught seven workshops on campus and three of my students from those workshops were selected for the Millennials and Data Cohort run by Chantilly Jagannath. And in my last semester at George Mason University, about to get my Bachelor of Science in Economics and Data Analytics. And I'm currently interning at Levelytics, which is a Tableau partner consulting firm. I also created this Tableau student guide, which is a website that provides concise resources for students and newbies who want to learn the basics of Tableau, connect with the community and build their Tableau portfolio. So as a student, I know the importance of resumes. And I also know that resumes in Tableau can be very beneficial to students and professionals alike. So why should you build an interactive resume? There are a multitude of reasons why building an interactive resume is not only fun, but is also good for you professionally. First off, in building a resume within Tableau, you are accomplishing two things at once. You're describing your skills and experiences 
while you literally show your capabilities in Tableau when building a resume with the tool. So um, I say all that, but before moving on, an interactive resume in Tableau is not meant to replace your official resume that you might apply to jobs with. That might not get very far past the application bots and processes that scan, um, scan your paper. However, it is something that you can include in your application or show a recruiter at the interview. And I guarantee you that they'll be very impressed if you pull that out for them. Tableau resumes are also helpful because you can use Tableau's hover and collapsible container capabilities to provide more space for information that you might have cut on a regular paper resume. I think we all understand uh, the difficulties of trying to pack the most important pieces of information on one piece of paper and then having to cut stuff that you may think is important, but you just don't have space for it. So building off of that, because it's a more informal resume, you're allowed the freedom to think outside the box and find ways to show your creativity and design skills in a more personal way. And last but not least, building resumes in Tableau is really fun because the data is about you. Gathering data on yourself is easy, I think we'd all agree, and you don't need to go through the typical process of validation or cleaning. It's always fun to talk about yourself, so why not do it in a creative and socially acceptable way using Tableau? So what do we need when we're going to build a Tableau resume? There are three steps to approaching. Content, structure, and design. With content, I mean the actual words and content that you put on your resume. Structure means the data structure that you decide upon before you start building. And design is meant for decisions surrounding color, shapes, sizes, and layout. So let's start off talking about content. Before you open Tableau, or before you open Excel to input your data, you first need to sit down and determine the purpose of your resume. When doing this, think about why you're building it and who it is for. Are you building this to show at a job interview? Are you switching careers and want to break into the data visualization sphere? Or is this more of a fun project and a way to show friends and colleagues a more personal side to you? These are the type of questions you should ask yourself and settle upon before you build the resume, because this will help determine the tone you want your resume to have. When I created mine, I knew that I wanted to kind of go down the middle. I wanted to show my experience and my, my um, skills in a more academic setting, but I also included a lot of personality because I knew that this wasn't something I was going to be showing recruiters. So speaking of tone, Think about the content that you want on it. Do you want to lean more personal and include hobbies and projects or fun stuff like recent books read? Or do you want to lean more professional and stick to showing your experience, certifications, and skill sets? Sit down and make a list of what you want to include on your resume. The more specific, the better, because this will help you when you build your data. When you create your content, You'll also want to organize your content into clear sections like education, work experience, projects, and skills. The more prep that you can do beforehand and write everything out on a Word document before you input it into Excel for data, the more work you can do on that, the easier it will be when you have to go back and revise anything. So let's walk through some examples by the community. So Christian Felix here has a really clean and nice looking resume. A content section that caught my eye on his resume is his section on certifications and exams to the right. With regular paper resumes, you may have the same section, but just, type, uh, just state the title of that certification. Here, Christian doesn't just include his certification titles and leave it like that. Let's move on to look at the interactive web, web version. So I pulled, up, I pulled up Christian's resume here, 
And as I move towards the right, you can see his certification and exam. He's put this in a bar chart that actually shows the specific skills that the, the certification tests. And when you hover over it, you can see the weight that the exam gave this skill. This is a really creative way to include data viz and the actual content. If you scroll to the bottom, you can also see that um, he includes a section for his Myers-Briggs profile with a range chart to show where he lies on the personality skills, introverted versus extroverted, and more. So Christian's resume here is a really cool example of something that is very clean and professional looking, but also includes a bit of personality with it. So moving on to Midori. Sorry, let me go back. So moving on to Midori Mi, um, she also has a really nice and minimalistic resume. So here her per portfolio section caught my eye. Um, if you go to the interactive version, you'll see that in creating her resume with Tableau, she actually linked to her portfolio examples. I won't do it here because I don't want my, my web to go crazy, but if you click on any of these sections under portfolio, it will take you to the actual pieces of writing, website, or video on public speaking. So this is a really awesome example of the flexibility that Tableau provides in resumes. I know that when you apply to jobs, they often give you a very short section where you can include links, but this is some way that you can actually show them where it falls under, a very easy access um, and a just nice and creative way to link to these important sections. So, Lindsay Betzendahl. Lindsay's resume is a perfect example of out of the box content and a more personalized touch. She includes a personal about section along with the typical experience uh, and work presentations but she includes a fun section about her favorite charts. She shows visualization examples and explains in detail why she loves those charts. Again, this is a really great example of creative types of content that you can include on your resume. So let's look further into Lindsay's, Lindsay's resume. So if you scroll down here, you can see that in her favorite charts, she doesn't just include a picture or a simple graph. She actually does something fun. If you hover, she says, oh, a barbell chart and uses this to say, my enjoyment for Tableau increased from 2014 to 2018. Or she uses the bar chart to rank the pepper types um, in terms of heat. When you scroll down, you can also see a cool section that shows her presentations. And if you hover, uh, this is going to load. Uh, so if you hover, then you can say, see, this was live in person, and this is where she spoke and what she spoke about. And this is a tablet public presentation. And then she links to some of her work where it will take you to her visits. Moving back to Josh Tapley. So Josh's resume has one of my favorite creative content sections. Instead of self-quantifying his skills, he opts to include a more objective endorsement section. I really love this because it can be very tempting to include a skill section where you rate yourself on a scale. However, and this is just in my personal opinion, it can be very difficult for an outsider or a recruiter to understand what the scale means. If I see someone that defines themselves as proficient in Tableau with a four out of five, I don't know if that means a four out of 10 on my own scale. I'd rather see a more objective and concrete examples. So Josh Tapley throws that all out of the window and actually shows his skills from the eyes of his colleagues on LinkedIn, thus providing a way more objective view. So let's move on to the second step, structure. 
now that we have our content settled on and written out, um, remember that we can move on to structuring our data and inputting it into the correct format that we need. Remember that structure means the data structure that you decide upon before you start building. And the key word here is before you start building. So for me, design very much influences structure. Since you're actually building the data from scratch, it's important to let design influence how you build data. So the first step that you want to take is to sit down and physically draw out how you want your resume to look. I cannot stress the importance of this. As analysts, usually we receive the data before we decide on the best visualization that suits it. However, with Tableau resumes, this is flipped. You actually want to decide how you want your visualization to look before you build the data. You really want to figure out the types of charts you want to have on the resume because those charts will dictate how your data is structured. For example, if I decide on Gantz for my experience section, that will take a different data structure than deciding on simple coverable shapes. During this process, also take time to determine the section you want to focus on. It is easiest to sketch out a resume when you have a main section to highlight and then form the rest of the design around it. Do you want your experiences to take the lead or do you want your portfolio? or your public speaking experience. Think about this before you build and as you're sketching out your design. So during this part of the planning process, I usually go online and search out for resume inspiration. And I'll show you how you can do this in a couple of slides. Let's walk through um, an example of design-driven structuring that I did within my own resume. So with my resume here, you'll notice that it has a very unique sort of look that is different than other Tableau resumes you might find. My resume is actually completely hoverable, and I'll jump to the interactive version in just a second. So my resume content actually drove the design, which in turn drove the data structure. As a student, I really did not have a lot of experience. I only had one big internship role. Therefore, a Gantt chart was out of the question because I didn't have much of a timeline to work with. So at this point, I was really forced to think of creative ways to show what I could provide to future employers. I didn't like skill bars, so this forced me even further to think of out-of-the-box solutions. Uh, I settled to show my positions, programs, and projects, and even the classes I've taken. So moving on to the interactive version, you'll see that I was able to pack a lot of information into these hovers, and I was also able to include a fun hobby section where I linked to some content. I also chose to show a list of classes that I've taken so that recruiters can see not only the list in the titles, but also read the description of what I'm learning. I can also filter based off of the field of study if I want. So this is just a very creative way that you can think out of the box. Um, I included links. You can do that with dashboard actions. So if someone wanted to see what student ambassadors are, they could go to this link or click. Where I created um, a fun fact where I, I met the president and went to the White House. And then if you click the link, you can see a picture of me doing that. So uh, when I, with designs like mine, you may run into the risk that you're hiding a lot of information behind the hovers, thus needing people to take time to interact with your resume to discover the information. I was kind of concerned with that when I first made mine. However, people actually really liked it. I got a comment from a gentleman on LinkedIn who said, while this isn't the best form for an official resume, absolutely agreed. 
I actually spent 10 times longer looking at your resume and interacting with it because the design was so cool. Yay, that is exactly what you want. That is exactly what I wanted. So when you come up with creative designs and charts that show off your skills and personalities, you can really draw people more into interacting with who you are and what you can offer. So let me briefly run you through some examples of creative chart types that you can use in your resume. With a Gantt chart, these are mainly used to show the timeline of your experiences. Gantt's are very neat and clean and clearly show when you start and stop your jobs and where they may overlap. Maps are a very fun way to show a more personal side if you've lived and worked in a lot of places. You can say, hey, I'm cultured and experienced and I'm cool. Look at all these places I've been. It can also give you a talking point during your interview. Cleveland dot plots can be used to show the range of your skills. Again, I'm not a fan of self-quantifying skill sections, but I know that's just my personal opinion. Other people are big fans of it. Circle timelines are a very fun visual way to show your experiences. Josh Tapley, that is hit, um, Josh Tapley's filled circle timeline and is probably one of my favorite um, resume visualizations out there. Filled dot trackers can also be used for skill sections and shapes are my personal favorite. You can pick a shape and use a hover on it to describe more of your content you put in the shape section. These are just a few examples of the chart types and designs you can use in Tableau. And I challenge you to find and create something that hasn't been used before. Moving on to our third and final section, design should come last. And by design, I mean the cosmetic design like colors and not the overall structural design, which we covered in step two. So, Cosmetic design is extremely important in building your resume. The design is what determines whether people are drawn to look closer at your resume or not. Remember, with interactive resumes, the keyword is interactive. You want your user to open your resume and start hovering and clicking to find every last bit of information you packed in there. So with design, you want to provide something cohesive and beautiful to create a work of art that people want to look at. There are five main steps you want to hit during your design process. First, look for outside inspiration. Second, choose your colors and theme. Third, choose your shapes, if you so choose to use shapes. And fourth, use a consistent font. And fifth, prepare your resume layout and plan the scroll space that you're gonna to need to use. So looking for outside information. Like I mentioned a few steps back, during this stage of the planning process, it can be very helpful to look for outside inspiration, especially if you don't know what color theme or style you want to use. During this stage, I'll usually go to Google or Pinterest and search for resume designs, or infographics for layout and design information. When I created my resume, I actually took inspiration from a Word resume template. When I just opened a Word document, searched for resume templates, and I saw a couple of color schemes and layouts that I really liked. So let me show you an example of what um, an inspiring, searching for an inspiring resume would be like. So I went on Google and I searched out design resume examples and I got a great website that showed me a lot of design examples. So if I scroll down to Joseph Asina's resume here, I, you can see like on my resume, I kind of used a similar color, uh, but if I wanted, I could say, oh, I really like the way that he laid this out. I want to have my education and experience in the same way. Or you can go down and yeah, you can really just see this guy use some bar charts. Let me look further into what he did for that. 
or you can use a color picker. I know that Tableau Magic has a really good color picker where you can upload a picture and it will automatically generate a color palette for you. So if I liked the colors in this resume here, I could just screenshot it, upload it to a color picker, and then take the colors itself as inspiration. So speaking of colors, it is extremely important to choose the correct colors for your design. So when choosing your colors for your resume, you're going to want to stick to one main color and use no more than two secondary and supporting colors. So let me repeat that again. Use no more than one color and two secondary and supporting colors. So colors are very important to get right because a pop of the right color can be enough to draw someone in to look further at your resume. So this link here, canva.com, is a nice way to find complementary colors. But my personal favorite is uh, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O, coolers or colors, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, and let me show you how that works. So I'm at the site and this is a color palette generator. So if I click start the generator, once it loads, it's going to pull up just random colors. So if I press the space bar, it's going to switch up on the colors it gives me. So let's say I really like this, this um, color right here, dark purple. If I really like it, I can lock it here and it will keep that color and start generating palettes that are actually complementary to the palette itself. Let me lock this. I can move it around if I wanted. Start generating again. And you can see with this dark purple and this Tuscany color, this dark purple could be my main color. This Tuscany could be my secondary. And then I can find something else that could be a nice secondary color to complement it. So shapes is something that you may not initially think of when designing a resume in Tableau, but shapes can be a powerful tool to use when designing your resume, especially because it can be more data biz like I think the best way to show you how you can use shapes in your resume would be to show examples, which I'll do in just a minute. With shapes, you want to think about the driving theme. And you want to think, do you want a softer look or do you want a sharper look? You can use rounded, rounded bars to create more of a sharp look, or you can use hexagons, sorry, sorry, rounded bars to create more of a soft look. You can use hexagons or triangles to create a sharp look. look. But with shapes, you really want to keep it to no more than three shapes, um, and you really want to keep it consistent. So let's talk about fonts. So it is very important to choose the correct font. And you are really only going to want to use one font and use different variations on that font. Um, it is OK if you use maybe two. Uh, that's pushing it. I'm, I obviously don't know the science behind it, but I usually just stick to one type of font. Um, so here at the top, we have an example of something that you will not want to use at all. This, uh, on this example, I'm using three font types. And you can see that this can be just kind of off-putting. Um, the, the blocky colors, or not the colors, the blocky letters up top just don't really draw me in. And then I just get very confused when I'm switching between fonts. And it just doesn't look clean and cohesive. So... The bottom is a way better way. This is actually the same type of font, but using variations. So the top is a light variation. The bottom is a bolded, and then, uh, sorry, the middle is a bolded, and then the bottom is a regular, or again, a light version of that same font. 
So remember, we're working with Tableau and let's see, did I see this one? Yes. We're working with Tableau and Tableau actually only supports a couple of fonts when you publish it to the web. So once this loads, you'll see that, let me refresh this again. So you'll see that James Fox here has created a tablet of font and color guide. So this shows you that when you use, let's say you use um, Benton Sands. Benton Sands might look different. Let's say if you did it in PowerPoint, it might look different than it actually shows up in Tableau. So I learned this the hard way uh, with my resume. I used, I don't exactly remember what font I used, but it wasn't supported by Tableau. And so in some versions, in some computers and some screens, it actually shows up as Times New Roman, which then just kind of squishes, <laughs> squishes everything. Um, and it just didn't look good. It wasn't my intended font. So when you choose, a font in Tableau, you are really going to want to make sure that it is Tableau supported, or you can go to PowerPoint, open up a text box, and then choose. I'll show you. If you open up a text box and choose the, um, the font that you want, you can right click and save it as a picture. And then you can drag it into Tableau and have it be floating. So there's also dangers to this because sometimes you have to refresh a lot to get a picture in Tableau. But these are just ways that I'm kind of warning you about what can go wrong with fonts in Tableau. So to be very precise and careful with what you choose. So I'm going to move on to show you um, quickly just some colors and shapes and how they are used in Tableau. And I'm gonna go back to Simon's in just a minute um, to show you the actual interactive version, but let's walk through his colors. So you can see here that he has three colors that he uses. And one is a main and then two are highlights. So you can see that yellow he uses as his main color. It is, highlighted with his work experiences and education text. He uses yellow to show the places he's visited for work and holiday. There's a cool bar chart up here to show a little bit more of a pop. And he uses it in his text to pop out the word data. Then he uses black to create more of a secondary color and also uses gray as another secondary color. For shapes, he only uses three shapes. Hexagons, down to the right here, bars, up top, and triangles in his work experiences section. So of course there's tiny little circles, but I, I don't count those as primary shapes. So when you look at Simon's resume, just notice how clean and aesthetically pleasing that it is to look at. Um, this is just a really great example of clean and neat design that you can see. And we'll go back to Simon's in just a second. With Josh Tapley, he uses three colors, again. So his main color you can tell is a dark blue. And then he uses this orange shade to pop out different highlights down in his employment timeline and also up in some of his text and icons. So with this orange shade, you can also tell that he has used different variations on the shade. You can do this because it's not overwhelming and it is still used within the same color range. And I think that, yeah, it's like a, an opacity that's used there, right? So, this is some way that you can kind of play around with colors, but keep it to three colors and then just a couple of shades on one if you want. And then of course, this third color is this kind of gray take on the darker blue. 
with shapes again he sticks to three shapes hexagons up at this top right corner which provides a really nice framing for the resume rounded bars for his linkedin endorsements and then half circles to create a half circle timeline to really creatively show moving on to iram here she has a very clean and minimalistic looking resume which i really admire she uses three colors again this very light teal blue she uses as her main color and then of course a gray to kind of balance this out and provide a background and then this one pop of purple where she started the data school in australia this is one way that you can use mainly two colors and then just add a pop to draw people in to look more at what this means with shapes she uses three hexagons circles and bars you may see that hexagons circles and bars are actually the most popular shapes uh, because they're very easy to manipulate so Iram here does a very good job um, of creating a beautiful and minimalistic looking resume. So I said that I was going to go back to Simon's interactive resume. Because this is just a really, really great resume and shows a lot of what I was talking about. So let's go down to this skill section right here with the um, hoverable hexagons. So remember that I said that I don't like skill sections. Simon also throw this, throws this out the window and says, I know Python, I know PowerPoint, I know Power BI, Tableau, Altrix, and he just puts the words on there and he uses the hexagons to create this list of what he knows without overpowering the user. If you wanted, you could also do what I did in my resume and create a description of maybe how long you've been using it and maybe some projects that it, you've used it on. With his work experiences, he uses collapsible containers to invite the user, well, that's going to load now, to invite the user in to click on this plus button and then it will show you exactly what it is. So this is a really cool way that he has included a lot of information without being overpowering and without taking up a lot of space. Another fun thing that he did was this very personal section. Click on the books to display a list of my last readings. So if you click, you can go and see the author, the title, and if you click this link, it will actually take you to where you can buy the book. And then click the book to hide, and it goes back. So hopefully these examples are inspiring you because I think Simon's is one of the most inspirational resumes that I've seen. Um, I, when I saw his, I wanted to create another one. So let's run through some final tips and tricks before we wrap up. Like I said, make use of the hovers and collapsible containers. Space is everything when it comes to an interactive resume. Use the white space and then fit what you can on these hovers and collapsible containers because then you can pack a lot more information in for less space. Use the dashboard actions to link to your LinkedIn, Twitter, public portfolio, etc. You can add little shapes and hovers or text to link to your dashboard actions to prompt users to go to and follow you on Twitter or on public portfolio. So you may be asking, okay, well now I know how to design my resume, but I don't know how to build it. Um, unfortunately, I can't really walk you through any one way, but I can say that I built my resume by downloading other people's resumes to see how they structured their data. So what I would do is that I would go to someone like Simon's resume. I would download it onto my Tableau desktop and then open it and then start clicking on his sections that he uses as sheets. If I see this, um, 
this collapsible container section or this triangle timeline that he used, and I want to replicate that, then go to the sheet and then click on the, the data detail section to see exactly how um, you do so. So let me just walk you through. I don't think I saved the link, but um, I'll download Simon's. And then I'll show you how you can do this. So remember that building your interactive resume is pretty much going to be on you to do. Um, I can show you tips and tricks how to do so, but because there's really no template out there, um, and the way that you want it, you're going to have to build it yourself. But like I said, there are ways to kind of cheat the system and look how to do it easily. Again, so if I wanted to create this triangle timeline that uh, that Simon used, here I've pulled up the sheet, and then I can say, okay, I'm going to go to this section right here, view data, and I can see exactly how he structured his data. If I want, I can actually export the data into a CSV and edit to include my own or to replace my own details. If I want to know how to build this, I would just start taking it apart, right? So I'm going to unclick dual access, and then I can see that he has this bar, he has this triangle. Let me see what this calculation is. Open it up and see exactly what he did. And so this way you can reverse engineer resumes to see how people built them. So before I move on, I have to say, if you are going to reverse engineer someone's uh, resume to gather inspiration, if you create something that is similar to the resume, you absolutely have to give them credit. So if, you, if I created something that looks similar to Simon's, I would just include a link at the bottom of the details of my viz that I publish. I would include a link to his dashboard and say, this was inspired by Simon. And if I tweet it out, just say, hey, thanks for the inspiration, Simon. That's all you have to do. But do not take someone's design and publish it as your own. Always remember to give the author credit. That being said, you can absolutely download other people's resumes, reverse engineer, and see how they built their data structures so you can be helped to create your own. And then the final tip and trick is use PowerPoint to create cool shapes and backgrounds. So PowerPoint is very powerful. Um, you can just create really cool stuff in PowerPoint, export them as pictures, and then use them in your resume to create backgrounds and pictures and shapes to make this resume pop. So before I, before I move on to my last slide, these are all the people that um, I used. Any, any picture, tiny as it may be, was used. I thank Anna Ford, Simon LaFosse, Josh Tapley, Eric Balish, Lindsay Betzendahl, Christian Felix, Iram Javid, and Midori Me. And then someone might ask, okay, well, can I have some inspiration or where would I go? There is a whole resume gallery. If you follow this link, that Tableau hosts full of amazing visualizations and resumes that people have uploaded to Tableau Public. So just follow this link to see inspiration and if you want you can download reverse engineer and start building and that is it so thank you so much and i think there may be questions and i'll just pass it off to you Sardar. yes thanks a lot maria i think it was really inspiring to see the process which you follow and the best part which you i think shared with us is that go ahead and do reverse engineering right and i think this is the way we have learned tableau right 
how someone has gone ahead, created something, just download the workbook and just learn how to do it right. Best part is that give them the credit for that. I think that is one thing very important and uh, you rightly said about it. So we have a couple of questions for you, Maria. The first question is about fonts. What do you think about, what is your favorite fonts which you use in Tableau? So my favorite font actually um, is the Tableau fonts because okay. I don't have to worry about it appearing correctly on Tableau. That being said, I have used different fonts um, and then I just go to PowerPoint and find a font that I really like and export it as an image and then bring it in. Perfect. Do you want to talk about how exactly you go ahead and create shapes? I know you talked about sometimes you go to PowerPoint and just go ahead and create something and then take it to Tableau, right? Other than that, do you use any other resource for shapes and all? Sure, so I don't actually use any other resource, but I'll walk you through how you can create a shape in PowerPoint. So if I create a new tab, let me go to shapes over here and I'll choose this hexagon. Creating the shape is pretty easy. You can just drag it out to your desired width and length. And then if you go to shape format, you can say, I want a purple fill with a blue outline and create this outline more weighted. So when I do that, I'll right click the shape, save this picture, and then I'm going to go to my documents, go to my Tableau repository, click on shapes, and then I'll choose resume badges. This is actually where you can see some shapes that I've saved. I'll save this as a shape. And then when you go into Tableau and click on shapes, you can access the, this new shape that's popped up in Tableau. And so you can use it. So that's how I would create shapes. Oh, I think that's a great trip for everyone to go ahead and follow it. Yeah. And there was one question I really wanted to ask you was about what are the three, I think, maybe advice you will give to someone who has just started using Tableau? Sure. What do you, yeah. Yeah, so my biggest advice for someone who has just started out is to download other people's visas and start reverse engineering them. So when I didn't know how to do um, I think it was like a dynamic shading or parameter control. I didn't know how to do that. So I went to someone, I think it was Mark Bradbourne, who had his viz that did this capability. So I downloaded the viz and then I just started picking everything apart, right? So I'll take things off the shelves, I'll put them back on the shelves. I'll click to see what code that they, what, what code that they used in their calculations. And then I will use that to build out and recreate what he did. Now, of course, I didn't publish what he did because that would be um, stealing his work, but I just use that in my personal time to understand how this was built. So if you are ever unsure of what to do, always just download and reverse engineer. And of course, as Sigar said, if you're new to Tableau, check out the tabloestudentguide.com. Um, that has a lot of resources that can be very helpful for you to start in your journey. Do you want to go ahead and maybe talk about it? Just share it, what exactly? Yeah. Sure, yeah. So I actually have it linked up here. So it's the tabloestudentguide.com and I just published this out a couple of days ago. And so within this guide, you can see there's about 30 posts here. I can walk you through downloading the start page, the data source, the workspace, how to build basic views, 
And then once you're comfortable with Tableau, how to create your public portfolio, how to publish to Tableau Public, what type of projects? We click on projects, right? So I give you a lot of links and descriptions to the type of projects that you can use. Um, and there's other sections like if you want to get on Twitter and join the community. Um, here's a lot of resources. Here's a lot of data sets, specialist exam, different blogs, um, and some interviews that you can read. So if you're new to Tableau, check this out. I think it is probably, I'm not sure, but it, it has a lot of concise resources in one place. So that would be an easy way for you to get started. Perfect, thank you. Let me just see if someone has any questions. I think we have, we are good with the questions. I think there are no more questions. But awesome. yeah, but yeah, th yeah, thanks a lot. I think I have one thing for everyone. So let me just share my screen. So what we have done in this connect and just to make it more impactful, okay. So let me have gone ahead and presented on how exactly you can go ahead and create interactive resume in Tableau, right? So what I want everyone in the community is that you have attended something, go ahead and apply it, right? So let me just share my screen and share the challenge with everyone. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So thanks a lot, Maria, for sharing with us how exactly we can go ahead and design an interactive resume. Now we have a challenge for everyone who's there on the call. Challenge is very simple go ahead and create for yourself an interactive resume and publish that on Tableau public profile and send that link. Rather, go ahead and post that on Twitter, tagging Maria and me with the hashtag Visconnect, hashtag Tableau interactive resume. So the first 10 people who go ahead and create their own resume will get some Tableau swag. So this is by way, by a particular way, what we are doing is that we are making sure that if you're learning something, you're going ahead and apply it, right? Like we used to get homework in a school, right? You can treat it that way, but it will be more challenging for you and we have some fun prizes for you guys. So this is important. Go ahead, practice it out. I will go ahead and share all the details which Maria has shared in this particular session about the Tableau public profile, the portal which showed us the learning portal. I think that's very important. If someone is new to Tableau, just go ahead and learn from each other. That's such a great opportunity. Yes. <laughs> and I think, yes, the one thing which you, you also said that, right? You are using four types of things and you are challenging someone. Let's go ahead and check. One has any other way to go ahead and visualize a resume, right? That can be inspired someone and we can learn from each other, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I challenge everyone to create a resume. This recording will be up soon on YouTube. Um, and so you can always go back and check out my PowerPoint tips and tricks um, when you're creating your resume. Right. And and Maria, what do you think about Twitter? I'm talking more Twitter in terms of how exactly it helping you basically to connect with the community. Yeah, Twitter has been really great. Um, it is a way to follow people who have a lot of resources. And if you ever have questions, you can always reach out to people. Um, I'm on Twitter at Visiting Rocks. If you want, you can always reach out to me with any questions. I'll get back to you when I can. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great way to also um, show off some of your visits that you've made, tweet out your interactive resume. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a really great thing. I recommend anyone to join Twitter and make their Tableau public profile if you haven't already. Perfect. I think with that, thanks a lot, Maria, for presenting on Connect. I think it was a great session and I hope everyone is will go ahead and implement it and create their own interactive resume and share with everyone in the community. Awesome. So, well, thank I you so much for the opportunity. Perfect.
So thanks a lot, everyone, for joining and have a great weekend ahead. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.